Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hey, we have an exciting show for you today about bonding with your dog and bonding with your family. We will explore different ways to grow close relationships. And I would say that Carson has fully bonded with us at this point. Yeah, he's especially bonded with us over the last year because we were at home more like everyone else. You know, there's been more time for play, for walks, for pets. You know, he's really slowing down and maturing and turning into a very sweet and affectionate pup. Yes, he is. And today we have an article from greatpetcare.com that covers nine simple ways to bond with your pet. And we're going to talk about a couple and let you visit our show notes page on our blog to get the rest because... We need to leave plenty of time to hear from the inspiring Dogs Bond board game creator, Alex Liu. Y'all are going to love Alex's message about dogs and family and, and not just the inspiration behind the game, but also the kind of bonding that this hilarious gameplay creates. <laughs> yes, I absolutely can't wait. But before we get to Alex, here are a couple of the best ways to bond with your dog at home. But keep in mind that every pet and every person has their own preferences, so Find something that you enjoy doing together. One of the fun ways mentioned in the greatpetcare.com article is to play indoor parkour. So for those of you who don't know, parkour is a fun, low-impact, non-competitive sport in which a dog navigates physical obstacles. So it's similar to an agility course, but less structured. And it teaches dogs to interact with objects in their environment by going around them, jumping over something. And you can create these parkour courses with items in your own house. Just make sure it isn't something that a Jack Russell will steal and run off with. We are talking about (laughs) indoor parkour, but you could also set this up in your backyard if you have a backyard. And throughout this process of this parkour course, a dog learns to be more confident while getting a great mental and physical workout. And they associate this fun experience with time spent with you. Gabe, do you think Carson would enjoy a parkour course? Absolutely. Carson loves any time spent with us, and he especially loves any activity that people would classify as enrichment. He's very energetic and fun-loving, but he's also a thinker. So these kind of courses where he has to really figure out what we want from him, what he has to do to get the treat, I think he'd be really into it. Yeah, I definitely think it's something we need to try. Another way to bond with your dog is to tap into the power of touch. And this is where I would say pay attention to your dog's body language. If they don't like it, then don't force it. You'll have to try something else. And what you can do is you can use your fingertips to create a soft, just circular motion and actually give your dog a little massage. And most dogs love having their neck or chest massaged. But you might find other favorite spots on your particular dog, such as their hindquarters or head or ears. And some veterinarians actually believe that this massaging technique is associated with benefits like stress relief and lowered blood pressure. So you can try this and watch as your dog relaxes, and you might find that you actually relax too. We've had a lot of bonding experiences lately, me and Carson. I know I like to joke around a lot about how He's always putting me down like I'm number three in the totem pole of this home. But it's been really cool lately, especially towards the end of the day when he's tired. He'll come over. He'll lay next to me and I just pet him. And it's like the dog man relationships you see in a movie. So, you know, it's all yeah. just sweet and loving. So uh, it took us a while to get there. It's It's been very enjoyable. Yeah, I think it's taking some intentional work, some intentional bonding, applying some of these techniques and really spending additional time with him to get you there. But it's really nice to see. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of Aloha. Genesis Beloth, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California, but she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. 
That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of Aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. We have with us the creator of Dog Spawned, a new board game created by dog people for dog people. Alex Liu. Hello. So, Alex, tell us about your background and what led you to become a game designer. My background is San Francisco, born and raised, uh, grew up, same as many folks, family, lots of holidays, and you're playing different board games. You learn Slapjack, you learn <laughs> Mousetrap and Guess Who and Connect Four. I mean, I was like a fiend about Connect Four. Still am. My day job, I'm a program manager in tech. I do mergers and acquisitions, which is completely different and a complete departure for board game design. I wanted to create something tangible, something tactile that my family and I could enjoy. You want to bring them to the table for something more than just, you know, eat food, stare at the plate and leave, right? <laughs> right. I had to figure out a way that I could engage with my very diverse family and board games are it, right? It doesn't, it doesn't require a screen. It requires you to be present in the moment. Absolutely. I do a lot of work with and volunteer with rescue locally, less so in, in these times, but as soon as, you know, I get the second dose, then I'm back, I'm back, baby. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the whole thing about that is there's a message, right? When I started thinking about the game and I said, I would like to build a board game to kind of teach people and have the conversation around rescue, responsible dog ownership and building the bonds of friendship and building those bonds of love in maybe some unexpected places. This is my magnum opus around creating something, contributing to a society and a conversation that is improving the lives of animals and uh, also to connecting people in a genuine way. That That's absolutely amazing. Um, I, you've kind of spoke to this already, you know, about what inspired you to make a game about rescuing dogs, but is there anything more you want to add to that? A lot of games focus on violence. Mm -hmm. War is the, like the main mechanic, right? You're going to defeat this army and wipe your opponent off the map. You're going to, you know, or, or, or scarcity and resources, right? Oh, this guy has more, uh, you know, wood and sheep than you. So they're going to build, fa you know what I mean? And so there's like, right. there's that competition and, and kind of, um, you know, and, and the themes right, are maybe city building, war, elves, dwarves, that sort of thing. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, I just don't see a game like this, a game where if we sat around the table, played a couple of rounds, it would inspire people and open them up to having a conversation about when did you have a dog? When did an animal impact and influence your life? When did rescue change your life? That's really the inspiration. That's wonderful. Um, so as an example, yeah we have a rope toy and this rope toy in the game is how you denote whose turn it is, right? So it's pretty <laughs> obvious. You got a rope toy, it's your turn. But as soon as you're done with your turn, you have to take that toy and pass it to the next player and everyone at the table barks at you, right? So it's like, you know, this whole table, everyone's just running, bark, 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 bark. and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Even the family dogs will get involved, right? And uh, you better believe when you've got, you know, a teenager or a 20 something, 30 something, you know, um, you know, or, 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 or anyone, right. Who's on their phone distracted or, you know, doing something else when everyone is barking at them, you better believe they're back in the moment. <laughs> they're back in the present. That's great. And that's something that I really enjoy about board games, right? It's like, get back in here. We want to spend time with you. Kona and I would play rope all the time. Like she was a tugger, yeah. you know? She wouldn't fetch. She didn't want to. It was just like, here, you hold this end and we're going to play with it, right? So yeah. uh, the, the rope toy passing, that's that's for Kona, my dog. Oh, that's great. So can you give us a basic overview of the strategy of the game? Yeah, the bones of the game. Sure. So all the players start off as a rescue dog. You get to choose between one of the eight different breeds that we were able to unlock in our Kickstarter. Of course, one of them is the Jack Russell. Maybe we'll start with that. Woohoo! 
<laughs> so you play through events at a rescue shelter environment, like a visitor came by or you know, a child dropped food or you know, you're getting your flea check. You play through and you will collect the attributes that you need, like health, grooming, temperament, and uh, obedience, right? And these attributes map to multiple adopters. There are six adopters that come to the adoption day. And so you could find your, your forever home with any one of the six. And that's the game. The, there is a winner based on points, right? So, you know, you, you score the most points, you win. Pretty simple. But there is a chance, like, let's say, you know, Becca, Gabe, and myself, we're all playing. There are three dogs, there are six adopters, so there is a potential that everyone gets to go home. This game sounds so fun. I, I can't wait. So, see, so you mentioned that there were eight different dog breeds. Uh, how did you choose which ones to be represented in the game? These are the mutt mixes, right? And they're mostly this breed, right? So mostly a Jack Russell, mostly a Boston Terrier, mostly a uh, Labrador, right? And, um, and the reason why I chose them was because one, they were breeds that I had actually personally had experience with. So I could kind of speak to what are their superpowers, yeah. <laughs> and as well as like just kind of more like recognizable breeds like in, in the U.S. There's opportunity for us to build expansions, meaning add additional dog breeds. And we have designs for Dobermans, for Chihuahuas, Cocker Spaniels, Pit Bulls. These were the eight breeds that I'd had the most experience with and felt most authentic when installing them into the story. And I think that's really what this game has has really kind of struck with folks is that Yes, it is a game about rescue and finding your forever home. And when you're sitting down with friends and playing a board game, you know that like you're investing time in one another and you're going to do something together because nobody's going to say like, hey, remember like last year you showed me that meme? <laughs> <laughs> but there are stories that like I have with my family, with my friends when it's like, hey, remember when we played that game and this totally happened? Yes. Oh, my. Are we still talking about that? Yes, we're talking about this right now. <laughs> and, you know, those are the kind of stories. These are the kind of memories this board game offers to dog lovers. Wonderful. Yeah. And we hear that your family has a Jack Russell. So uh, can you give us your yeah. best uh, JRT story yeah. or three? <laughs> Or two or three. Great. Yeah, I'm ready. So um, <laughs> his name is Smudge. My wife got him when he was a very, very small puppy. And uh, he's a family dog. And uh, he's 14 years old now. So she got him before she was my girlfriend or wife. So he's, you know, he's her dog very much. I see. Um, but yeah. I love him too. One of the big things for me uh, taking care of Smudge, you know, going on walks and th things like this, just the nature of the breed, right? Just kind of shines through like, doesn't matter, right? Like, like you can nurture all you want, but there's a nature of the breed. So like finding, rooting, uh, digging, right, uh, is just like inherent in the breed. And so what Smudge would do, because I live in an apartment, uh, Smudge had to go finding something, right? So he's digging through clothes and just whatever, right? But he loves the garbage. Oh. He's always in my garbage. And like, <laughs> we had to get specific you know the locking like mechanisms on the garbage cans so that he, even if he knocked it over it wouldn't be you know garbage everywhere um so his love of garbage uh really <laughs> inspired me and touched me and touched my heart so the jack russell in the in the game the jack russell when his special ability or her or her special ability is when drawing attributes you may draw from the top two of the discard pile instead of drawing blind because Smudge was always in the garbage. And I'm like, yes, this yeah. is, how I can communicate in a game mechanic, right? Like if somebody threw something away, like, nah, that's not what I want, or, oh, I lost that or whatever, right? Who's going to get to it? It's going to be a Smudge dog. That's so. great. <laughs> I will just add that we can so relate. Before we figured it all out, right? Where we have ones that are locked or it's under the sink or whatever, right? I bought one that said child protect, you know, it was like supposed to be like, he couldn't get into it. Are you kidding me? He found a way. They find a way. <laughs> They're so clever. They're so, so clever. So I wanted to figure out a way where I could, you know, subtly put that in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So people like Becca and Gabe, who know Jack Russell's, when you're playing as a Jack Russell, you're like, what is this about? What's behind? Oh, <laughs> right. yeah. When you're in a board game, when you're at the game table or you're in a podcast interview, 
then you get to ask some really deep questions and you start to get to know the person. And what I have found as a kind of a, a byproduct or like a, like a happenstance of this game, and I had never intended it. After we play the game, every play test, people will sit with me for another 45 minutes to an hour talking about their dogs, talking about dogs and how they influence their life, how they changed, you know, how they taught, how these animals taught the human how to be a good friend, how to be a responsible dog owner, right? And that in many ways has been how, you know, how this game really was pushed forwards, right? And really encouraged me to say, yeah, there are things in the game that I want to give structure to, right? But there's also room in the game or during the game for those stories to, to kind of surface and be talked about. You know what? It's a little too quiet. Let's take a quick break and check that our pups aren't rummaging through the trash. We are back. And thank goodness Carson was just asleep. No evidence of mischievous activity was found. So what is your earliest memory of having a dog? I grew up and other people had dogs, like friends had dogs, right? And I love petting the dog. It was me, my mom, my sister. So pets were not an option, right? I already had a pet sister. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and uh, so I was in college and you finally move into the house off campus and you're like, yeah, this is going to be great. So I asked my roommate, you know, one day, could you go and, and pick up groceries, please? And she came home with a puppy. Ooh. And I was like, what have we... <laughs> What has happened? Like, <laughs> what? what is this? And so I had to do, you know, a crash course just reading, you know, at this time it was just like blogs, you know, I'm finding stuff using like Alta Vista. So, um, so I, I taught Kona how to, you know, sit, stay calm. Uh, we learned about, you know, tugging on the rope. Like, is this an aggressive behavior or is it a play behavior? How do I learn to communicate with this puppy? Right. Uh, that was my introduction to responsible dog ownership. If you or anyone want to go and, you know, kind of see Kona and me, uh, you know, you can check us out uh, you know, on the website, right? Like we've got, I've got, I've got pictures there. I got pictures with me and Smudge. Lots of dogs have influenced this game. And I think more than it being just a game about a dog breed, it's really about, again, the bonds of friendship. That, that's incredible. And I'm I'm so glad that uh, that roommate brought home that dog as a grocery <laughs> item. <laughs> yeah, because changed I, my life. Absolutely. Yeah. You're never the same. It's fantastic. Speaking of other people and friendships and all of that, tell us about the rest of the team that helped you create this game. I will sing their praises uh, forever. So this masterpiece came together through the help and illustrations of Sarah Mills and graphic design uh, Kiki Perazella. And these two young professionals, they found my job posting, essentially. I had made a video on YouTube, and you can go check that out too, and basically explained the concept of the game demonstrated a few things on video, and then basically put out a plea to the internet. And I said, please, please, please help me, or else I will draw. <laughs> it's only cute for a minute. And so Sarah, she's a self-taught illustrator. She picked up the project and said, you know, hey, this as a game concept is really interesting. She wasn't a big board gamer, big video game player, but not a big board gamer. But she's also a huge dog person. She has whom she calls her son, Leo who is a Boston Terrier. And because of Sarah and my conversations, we were able to add a Boston Terrier into the game, which was really great for us. Sarah's amazing. And she really helped me in the process as well, teach me how to speak about art, project plans and resource management. That's kind of like what I do. But she understood that, hey, this game needs to have a vibe. Yes, please. And thank you. Like save me from myself. And then fortunately for me, Sarah's best friend, Kiki is a graphic designer. And this was like the winter of 2019. So I had flown out to North Carolina, met with Sarah in person, was like, hey, I'm real. This is a real project. I need to show you the game and how it plays right now. And we went to game stores and, you know, opened up a bunch of different demo boxes. And I was like, these art and this art and this art. And I like this, I like this, I like this. So she was getting an understanding of both how to play the game, but also what the art needed to convey 
um, Sarah was driving home from that meeting with my prototype and then going home to meet up with Kiki. They played the game and then Kiki solved like 20 different problems that Sarah and I had spent four days identifying. (laughs) (laughs) And so the way that I speak about this team is I really applied to be their teammate more Uh than they applied to for me to hire them. I needed them way more than they needed me. Really been a great relationship of being a virtual team. And then of course, you know, 2020 kind of finishing out all the art and all the Kickstarter stuff and, and being successfully funded to do the initial print. All of that was done virtual. But we had invested the time. We knew, you know, how to how each other would communicate. And they just stepped up to the plate and just exceeded my wildest expectations for this game. Yeah, I I will add that just looking at your website, at the prototype, at the illustrations, you have all come together and created something that's very beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. And I feel like the illustrations, there's such a vibrancy and life and, and yet so much warmth to it at the same time. That's what I aimed for. And I couldn't really articulate it at the time when I was when it was just me. Right. And I was like, well, I need the you know, I need the game to we've got over 500 backers now. We've raised, raised over thirty thousand dollars, which is just tremendous. And we're partnering with multiple rescues like real life rescues across the U.S. And we're going to open it up worldwide for organizations to use this as a fundraising tool because they are working in the same mission that we are, right? To improve the lives of animals. Speaking like as the we, like me, Sarah, Kiki, like our hope, our our intention here is to create that positive change in how we speak about rescue and adoption. That's incredible. We love the spirit in the heart, not only behind the game, but behind your mission and your passion. So we really can't wait to get this game ourselves. When will this game be available and how can people get it? So you can pre-order right now. If you go to www.dogsbondgame.com, you can go ahead and just click on the pre-order and uh, you know we'll go ahead and take care of you. Our hope, crossing fingers and toes, we should be shipping and fulfilling to our, to our backers, to our pre-orders by late summer of this year. Great. So it'll be out in time for Christmas then. That's the hope. That's the hope. It's all there, www.dogsbondgame.com. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Join our email list. You can hear about other expansions. And when the game does release in late summer, we have lots of funny, well, I think they're funny because they're more embarrassing videos about how to play the game. And we'll do that on TikTok. And we'll you know, probably push it to the other platforms as well. That's wonderful. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, the game is fu- the game is fully realized, and it's it's just you're just waiting for the box to arrive. Basically, mm-hmm. that's where I'm at. That's exactly where I'm at. But please tell your friends, spread the word, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out. We would love it if you would adopt us and mm-hmm. bring us to your home and your game table. If the message, if the game, and if bonding is important to you, like come check us out. Um, Alex, we have one last kind of round of questioning that we like to call the Zoomies. <laughs> I know exactly why they're called the Zoomies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would as a JRT parent. For for Smudge, I mean, he's 14 now. Wow. He still has the Zoomies. Every time we take him for a walk, people are like, oh, how young is the puppy? We're like 14. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. All right. Are you ready? This is rapid fire. I am ready. Okay. What is your favorite dog breed? That is a not fair question. That's, that, how, do you, how, how do you answer that fast at all? You're supposed to say Jack Russell. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like, you know, of course, Jack Russell Terrier because of Smudge. I love big dogs, too. Right now, I'm, I'm really into, like, the Husky Malamutes. Maybe just because that's what I would see, like, a lot during, like, winter. What is your go-to dance move? So, wow, I've never talked about this uh, on, a, on a podcast for dogs. <laughs> Back in high school, I was on a Nike-sponsored hip-hop dance crew. Oh, uh, sweet. My go-to dance move, I think, is probably the Roger Rabbit. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> this is the best. Okay. If your hometown was a food, what would it be? A Chinese banquet. So me being being a, of Chinese descent, growing up in San Francisco, I lived in a very you know, Asian neighborhood. And so, yeah, but I think it's a Chinese banquet because you're going to have a little bit of everything and different flavors, but it's all there. Sounds delicious. Sounds wonderful. So what's your favorite book? 
can I give you a series? Sure. sure. The Dragonlance Chronicles, which is a uh, series of books. It's a you know young adult uh, fiction book series, but I've read it multiple times. Um, and it takes place in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. What would you say is your greatest talent? Bringing organization from chaos. And I do that in my daily job, my work. I try to apply that to this project. It brought a lot of that like knowledge and know-how into creating this game. And, and That's awesome. What was your nickname as a kid? I don't know that I had one. I think it was just Alex. Well, you're lucky. We'll leave it at that and move on. That's good. <laughs> okay. Do you prefer smoothies or milkshakes? Milkshakes. And what is your dog's best trick? Yeah, it's finding stuff in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, too, finding toys that we mean to give him. Like you mentioned Christmas. We'll try to get him some treats or we'll get him a new toy. But his special ability is finding them, number one. And then destroying them in about 30 seconds. <laughs> if there's a squeaker in it, it's not going to be in it for a while. Yes, as Jack Russell parents, we relate to that. And to do a shameless affiliate plug, you might want to check out Super Chewer made by BarkBox. Their, their, so toy, great. their yes. toys are like Jack Russell proof. Amazing. Do I'm that. writing that down for the wife. Yeah, she'll be, <laughs> she'll be glad. Well, this has been an absolute delight, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell the listeners one more time your website? Yep, it's www.dogsbondgame.com and it's spelled the way it is spelled in English, no fancy, you know, app name. And we're we're there and we're on basically all of your favorite social media platforms too. Wonderful. We look forward to connecting with you in the future and uh, pushing your wonderful game out to everyone who will listen. And and even those who won't, we're going to grab them by the shirt and say, this is <laughs> awesome and you need to know about it. Yes, absolutely. You know, and and that's that's the thing that I love about kind of this this kind of uh, opportunity. Right. It's inviting people back to the game table who maybe haven't played board games in a long time. And, you know, my idea, my hope is that bringing dog people to board games, but also to bringing gamers to dogs, right? We can find homes for these animals. We can build those bonds of friendship and love for one another and spend some time together. Thank you for listening. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. <laughs> We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.